Welcome to All Hallows Eve. Blessed Samhain and a happy Halloween to all. This is the time of year when the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. And that can only mean two things. One, you're communicating with ghosts. And two, you want to know what Halloween movies you should watch. And that's why to celebrate here at the Cobwebs channel, I'm going to tell you my top 10 Halloween movies that you might not have heard of if you're not too scared. Let's go. Trick or treat, everybody, and welcome to the Cobwebs channel. My name is Daniel, and I'm very excited about this list. And I have to give you two disclaimers about this list before we jump in. Number one, these are movies that actually take place at the Halloween season. I see a lot of lists about what are the best movies to watch at Halloween time, and they contain a lot of movies that, yes, are good for this time of year, but have nothing to do with the holiday of Halloween. Number two, these are the movies that maybe you haven't heard of, so I stay away from any of the super obvious stuff like Trick or Treat, like anything in the Halloween franchise, like It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, uh, Night Before Christmas, Hocus Pocus, basically anything that has its own dedicated section at a Spirit Halloween store is not eligible on this list. The point here is recommendations and to hopefully get you some new movies for your Halloween traditions, and I rank them from least favorite to favorite because it's fun. And you know, I now realize it feels kind of wrong having this pumpkin here. It doesn't even have a face. It's not Halloween-y enough. Okay, you know what? We'll get on with the list in just a second, but I gotta do I gotta do this real quick. At number 10, we've got Kenny and Company from 1976, directed by Don Coscarelli. This movie goes through several days of a typical 12-year-old named Kenny and his friends. Kenny goes through all the activities that many people went through as kids in the 70s as him and his friends prepare for Halloween. Along the way, Kenny deals with such childhood issues as bullies and his first crush on a girl. Despite the fact that the horror genre is absolutely synonymous with Halloween, I wanted to include some non-horror movies because I like the idea of of a movie that's just about people that happens to take place around Halloween. A lot of this movie is just a coming of age movie and a darn good one, I think. Um, it's pretty fun as it just goes through these kids. They're very realistic. They're not like overly great kids. They definitely have flaws. And I saw a lot of realism in it and a lot of things that even I related to, even though I didn't grow up in the 1970s, of course. But then the third act all takes place on Halloween night. They're going out with their Halloween costumes and they end up getting scared by a group of older kids. And it's actually a pretty good horror sequence. And it's actually that scene that uh, inspired Don Coscarelli to make his next movie, Phantasm, because he saw audiences watching this scene and jump and getting scared and he loved the feeling that he created that and that he provoked that reaction in an audience he didn't expect that so then he went on to make a horror movie and it turned out to be one of the most iconic horror films of the 70s and the whole franchise really defined his career so it's just a fun 70s coming of age movie with some great Halloween vibes and I really enjoy it this one isn't available to stream anywhere legit and unfortunately doesn't have a blu-ray release but you can watch it on YouTube here's a weird one at number nine this is is Ghost of Drag Strip Hollow from 1959. A group of drag racing teens move into an old deserted mansion and set up shop, making it their headquarters. They hold a Halloween party for the club's grand opening and invite everyone to come dressed as their favorite monster. Oddly enough, the festivities turn sour when one of the teens discovers an imposter among them in the form of a monster and maybe even some ghosts. So 1950s teen culture is incredibly iconic when it comes to the malt shops and the music and the cars and the fashions and all that. But there's actually not a lot of teen movies from the 50s. I mean, you got Rebel Without a Cause, but there's not a ton else. And there's even less 
15 horror movies, which is why I really cherish this movie. It's definitely a horror comedy. It's very, very goofy. And it's so fun for me to just watch these 50s teenagers spout out so much 1950s slang that I've never heard before. The way they talk is like fascinating and hilarious. It's a super goofy movie. It's got a goofy monster design and ghosts and woo, it's all spooky. And it's just really, really fun. Probably the main character is this girl who's super into cars and drag racing. And she's always got these guys around her telling her she shouldn't be into that. She should just be looking for a husband, blah, blah, blah. And the way that she tells them all off, I think is pretty ahead of its time. It's super fun. It's goofy. You can watch it on Amazon Prime right now. And I really hope it gets a Blu-ray release before too long. At number eight is a movie I literally just watched for the first time this morning. I was just looking up lists of Halloween movies and I stumbled across this one. This is The Terror of Hollow's Eve from 2017. After a 15-year-old boy is brutally beaten by high school bullies, he wishes for revenge while bleeding on a jack-o'-lantern and unleashes a terror of Halloween, a clown called the Trickster. By the look of the poster of this film, it looks like a super generic, low-budget, direct-to-video horror movie that you should never give the time of day to. But I actually thought this was way better than I was expecting. Way better. It's got good production values. It's got good actors. You're gonna see a couple actors you recognize in here, like Sarah Lancaster, and actually Eric Roberts is very briefly in this movie, which is weird. But the acting is all solid. And when it comes to the horror, this Trickster character is crazy creepy, although his makeup definitely feels a little bit more on the low budget side as this film is. But as he unleashes these different monsters and ghosts and curses onto these bullies, it's actually really, really creepy. There's this tree monster that attacks a guy in the woods. There is this group of scary puppets. Everything is really creepy in this movie. And it's just way darker and way more violent than you would ever expect. Because it's really a coming of age Halloween movie, right? It's about a kid. He's like 15 years old. And I just never expected this movie to be as dark and brutal and violent as it actually is. So if you're in the mood for sort of that kids vibe coming of age horror, but you just want it to be real dark and creepy, I think this is a movie to go with. It definitely has its flaws. You can tell the low budget sometimes, although not as much as I was expecting. And it's got a whole epilogue at the end that you really do not need, probably because the movie wasn't long enough because it's like 80 minutes long. But I really enjoyed The Terror of Hollows Eve. I watched it on the Roku channel with ads, but you can also rent it. And there is a DVD out there, but it seems to be difficult to get a hold of. At number seven, we've got another modern low budget one, and this is Curse of Crom, The Legend of Halloween from 2022. High school teenagers accidentally unleash an ancient Irish death god on their hometown and must stop it and send it back to its world before midnight on Halloween. This is another one that I saw fairly recently on streaming. I checked this one out on Peacock, although it seems to be streaming in a lot of different places, and just did not know what to expect because I didn't hear anyone talk about this. I, it just got no publicity whatsoever. And I was shocked what a real movie it was. It doesn't feel like this tiny little low budget thing. Production values, the Halloween and fall atmosphere, and the acting is all totally solid. I really did not leave me wanting in any way. And what I really, really liked about this is it incorporates real ancient Irish folklore in the origins of Halloween. A lot of what we know about Halloween today comes from Irish folklore a very long time ago, and it eventually got brought over here to America and so on. And this movie incorporates the legend of Crom, who is sort of this Halloween entity. And I really enjoyed that. I like all the Celtic stuff in this movie. And towards the end of this film, it's a group of teenagers who the film is about building a fire at a grave to lure this Celtic death god into the grave that'll take it to the other world before midnight on Halloween. And like, if that isn't just ideal Halloween vibes, I don't know what is. Like, do I want to build a fire by a grave to lure a Celtic death god to the other world? Absolutely, absolutely. This movie's definitely family friendly. And unlike the last one, you're not going to get a ton of darkness or violence. This is a much more low key, good vibes movie that you can probably watch with with most kids, although Crom's gonna be kind of spooky to some of them. If you're just not looking for something too dark, I really think this is just a fun Halloween time to put on in October. I really do recommend this. At number six, a Nickelodeon movie 
movie called Fun Size from 2012. And this Blu-ray cover definitely does the movie a disservice. It doesn't look like a Halloween movie, but it is. Teenage girl Ren is invited to a Halloween party by her crush, but she is also forced by her mother to take her oddball little brother Albert with her when she goes out trick-or-treating on Halloween. When she goes to the party instead and loses him, she must go out to find him before her mother finds out. Like I said at the beginning, I wanted to incorporate some non-horror movies, and that's definitely the case here. This is a very Halloween-y film. Almost the entire thing takes place on Halloween night. All the characters are dressed up in costumes. There's decorations everywhere. So it's got all those Halloween vibes you want without being a horror movie in any way. This is a teen comedy, a pretty goofy teen comedy at that. But I think if you've got a tolerance for that, I think there's just a lot of fun to be had here. I really, really enjoy this film. The characters are very likable. You've got Victoria Justice in the lead, but the star is definitely Jane Levy, who would later go on to star in Fadi Alvarez's Evil Dead remake, as well as his film Don't Breathe. So she's become kind of a legendary modern scream queen, and you can tell when you watch this because she really pops here. She's very funny. And even though this is a Nickelodeon movie, it is PG-13, and it's got a little bit more crude humor than you're probably expecting. I would probably compare this to something like Can't Hardly Wait, the 90s teen movie. It's that kind kind of a vibe, but all about Halloween. So I think it's a fun time. If you've got the tolerance for a teen movie from the 2010s, Man, I really recommend this. All right, let's get some 80s horror in here with Primal Rage from 1988. A scientist at a Florida university inadvertently creates a rage virus while performing experiments intended to restore dead brain tissue in baboons. When a journalist for the college paper breaks into the campus lab, he's bitten by one of the infected baboons. The virus soon spreads to a trio of delinquents and a valley girl, all of whom go on a killing spree. So this is a film that Vinegar Syndrome put out on four K Blu-ray this year, but it is streaming right now in places like Shudder. And this is one of my favorite discoveries of the year. I thought this movie was crazy fun. First of all, I really like the main characters in this. You've really got four main characters. They're all very likable, especially the main two, this guy and girl. They've got kind of a romance going on. And are they unique? Are they particularly interesting? Not really, but they're so nice and likable. And you just really like watching them together that it's just kind of feels like a sweet movie at times, which I really enjoy. But then when it comes to the rage virus stuff, even though the movie kind of sells you that it's a bit of a baboon horror film. Uh, the baboon's only at the beginning and kicks off this rage virus. It's really more so like a 28 days later kind of a thing. And you've got some scary violent stuff with these people just going nuts, attacking people. But is it a Halloween movie? Absolutely, because the movie is building towards a Halloween party. And when you get to the Halloween party, it's one of the best I've ever seen in a movie. It is so much fun. The movie like stops the plot to just show you costumes everywhere and just Everywhere, as far as the eye can see, there are these incredibly elaborate Halloween costumes. There's a live band at the party. It's blasting this really catchy, fun 80s song and just Halloween decor as far as the eye can see. And yeah, there's these three bullies, these delinquents who get the rage virus and they go on a spree, but they dress up in their Halloween costumes and they're all dressed up like skeletons with literal glowing red eyes. And it's just such a cool visual that those are your monsters going around attacking. So visually speaking, it's a really fun Halloween movie, and uh, I, I just thought the movie was a total blast and looks fantastic on Vinegar Syndrome 4K, so I highly, highly recommend Primal Rage from 1988. At number four, we've got Tales of Halloween from 2015. This is a horror anthology with 10 stories from many of the independent horror scene's top directors. Ghosts, ghouls, monsters, and the devil delight in terrorizing unsuspecting residents of a suburban neighborhood on Halloween night. This creepy anthology combines classic Halloween tales with the stuff of nightmares. So there are a lot of independent horror films out there that are trying to copy the success of Trick or Treat. They try to be these horror anthologies that kind of all tie together, uh, that all exist on Halloween night. And this is the only one I've seen that I would recommend. There's a lot of bad ones out there, but I actually really like Tales of Halloween. Because it's 10 different stories, it moves really quickly. I mean, that's more segments than almost any other anthology ever has. So they're all short, very much to the point. I think it's kind of impossible to get bored during this movie. And if you were into the independent horror movie scene around 2015, which I was, this is really a who's who of directors and actors. You've got directors in here like Lucky McKee, Mike 
Mike Mendez, Darren Lynn Bowsman, Neil Marshall, a cast of tons of people you know, like Alex Esso, even Adrian Barbeau provides the voice of the radio station, like it's John Carpenter's The Fog. Is every story great? No, but there's a lot of ones I really enjoy, like a Friday the 13th style one where he's attacked by a stop motion alien, and that's a fun mostly stop motion segment. You've got one with a man eating jack-o'-lantern, you know, I gotta love anything with jack-o'-lanterns. And I think my favorite is actually the first one called Sweet Tooth about a frightening entity that comes and attacks you to eat your candy and then you on Halloween night. Just those classic folklore type tales are really, really fun. At number three is a movie I actually don't own a physical copy of because I own it digitally, but you can stream it in a lot of different places right now. And I do have the book it's based on, and that is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark from 2019. In a small town in Pennsylvania, Halloween night, 1968, Sarah and her friends play a joke on the school bully and then sneak into a supposedly haunted house that once belonged to a witch. There they unleash dark forces that they will be unable to control. So the scary stories to tell in the dark book series are just that. They're small little scary stories to tell in the dark. So how do they adapt this into a movie? Well, they make it about kids who unleash this witch and therefore all of the scary stories that she has written end up coming to life. So a lot of the movie is a succession of death scenes in which kids are killed off in different creative creepy ways. My favorite is involving a scarecrow, which you can see on the cover right there, which I have called the most satisfying scarecrow horror ever to be in a movie. It's really creepy. This is an example of a PG-13 movie that's mostly kid-friendly, but it's just scarier than you would expect. It's really the scarier version of the Goosebumps movie with Jack Black that came out. The autumnal small town atmosphere is absolutely phenomenal, and all of the Halloween iconography is incredible. And the movie even has a scene at a drive-in theater, and I love drive-in theaters so much. I love to see them in movies, and here they're playing black and white horror films. Just the vibes of this movie are off the charts great. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is a perfect movie to watch every October. Time for the top two, everybody, and the runner-up is... Hellfest from 2018. On Halloween night at a horror theme park, a costumed killer begins slaying innocent patrons who believe it's all part of the show. So I was really excited for Hellfest when it came out in 2018, because at that time, theatrical slasher films, there weren't really that much. When I went to see this movie, I didn't expect too much, and I was absolutely blown away. A few days later, I took my wife to see it. She enjoyed it too. And nobody really saw this in the theaters, and everyone who did said it was bad, and I found I was was one of the only people talking good about this movie, but that is changing because now every Halloween season, I see online more people watching and discovering Hellfest and discovering how much fun it is. This movie all takes place at a Halloween theme park, which is incredible. I mean, the atmosphere is amazing. This is like the best haunted house attraction you could possibly go to for Halloween. So on an atmosphere level, it's absolute perfection. I love to look at this movie, but I actually think the kill scenes are pretty intense, well done, creative, very different from each other. And I actually really like the characters in this. You've got two main characters who are very likable, and then they've got some wild, wacky friends around them who are, you know, pretty typical slasher characters. They're goofy. They're throwing out ridiculous jokes. That's kind of how this genre is. I have no problem with that because I like the main characters enough. And the killer is very creepy and the whole movie builds to an ending that's very intense and a final moment that's absolutely chilling. I love Hellfest. If you like slashers, Halloween atmosphere, if you like going to Halloween theme parks, I cannot recommend Hellfest enough. At number one is a movie I cannot stop talking about on this channel because it came out this year. I just watched it. I love it so much. And that is Cobweb. Yes, from 2023. Cobweb came out the same weekend as Barbie and Oppenheimer. Got absolutely crushed. Didn't even get much of a release. But I bought it as soon as it came out on Blu-ray because I was intrigued by it. And it turned out I absolutely loved it. Eight-year-old Peter is plagued by a mysterious constant tapping from inside his bedroom wall. One that his parents insist is all in his imagination. As Peter's fear intensifies and this tapping turns to someone talking to him, he believes 
believes that his parents could be hiding a terrible, dangerous secret, and he questions his trust in them. Cobweb is an absolutely chilling horror fairy tale about a young boy with very creepy parents, played by Lizzie Kaplan and Anthony Starr. And as this voice behind the walls is telling him more about who she is and what her history is with the family, he suspects his parents are up to no good. Everything about this movie is so incredibly creepy, and it has amazing autumnal atmosphere throughout the whole thing. And then when we get to the finale on Halloween night, as a group of bad kids break into their house all wearing Halloween masks to do some real bad things, there's a creature in this movie and as it attacks, it's so terrifying, but it's also just like a perfect Halloween scene, exactly what you want to see this time of year. The creature design is incredible. I want like an action figure of it so bad, so incredibly creepy. This is a movie that really takes you into the mind and the perspective of a little child and makes you feel all of those childhood fears that he is as the movie goes darker and darker, so much darker than you would ever expect. I love Cobweb so much. It's like the movie of the season for me, and it's my number Number one Halloween movie that you might not have seen. That's my list, folks, but what other Halloween movies that might be a little bit under the radar do you love? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, check out my last video, which was on a tour of my whole movie basement. I had a lot of fun with that. I'm also going to put up the playlist on the screen of all my top 10 and top 15 lists. I just recently did one on werewolf movies, for instance. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. With all that said, don't forget to have a spooky, scary Halloween night and I'll see you next time.